What's going on everyone? Welcome to Robinson Motorsports. I got my cylinder back from Power Seal and I'm about ready to put it on Project Franken Ripper. Stay tuned. I sent this cylinder out to Power Seal USA down in Pennsylvania. It actually was great because it's pretty close to me and shipping was fairly quick. Uh, it needed a replate, it didn't need any boring or any welding or anything like that. It just needed your basic replate. Uh, it was 199 plus shipping, it came out to like 229. When I sent them this cylinder, you can do one of two things. You can either buy a piston yourself make sure you send it with them so that it helps them match the cylinder and make sure that this piston's going to fit or you can buy a piston from them that'll match your cylinder you might end up paying a little bit more or it it just depends on how it is i like to buy my own piston because i get discounts at a couple different places and send it into them i've never had them contact me and say that the piston was too small or it was too big things like that they they do a fairly good job the plating itself is going to be a, a certain thickness no matter what it's pretty much like a dip and it's that it's just the way that it is but they go through and they inspect it to make sure that the dip is correct that there's no porosity in it and that it's actually a, a cylinder it's round it's not ovular and there's no like bad spots in it so at that time, it's always good to have the piston that's going to go in it so then they can verify that this is actually going to work. I always like to go back through and just verify myself so then I know for peace of mind. Um, I've had these tools for a while because I've put pistons in, pistons in without plating it. So it's always good to measure your cylinder and just make sure that the piston to wall clearance is within spec. This is a B piston. Um, Pro X they are made in Japan to OEM spec they're not Chinese uh, some Wiseco's are I just I don't like Wiseco's I hear too many bad things about them and I don't hear any bad things about Pro X so I've always gone with Pro X couple tools that you're gonna need for assembling a top end is micrometer uh, this is a two to three inch set of calipers it's always good to have a set of these if you don't they're fairly cheap. They're just good for basic measurements and set of feeler gauges for your ring end gap and a dial bore gauge. This one I picked up off of eBay for like 50 or 60 bucks. Definitely a good tool to have if you're worried about the size of your piston and the health of your cylinder. Standard size piston, the biggest limit is 2.619 for a YZ250. I have this set up at 2.619 and my piston measured at the skirt here, the not the very bottom of it, but the very lowest spot you can get actually just passes through here. So take that, take your dial indicator here, your bore gauge, and you're just going to set it up so the lowest point is going to be zero on the gauge here. The standard piston clearance is 0.0018 to 0.0020 with a maximum outer limit of 0.004 inches. So this is set to zero at our piston size so then we're going to just put it in here and We'll measure about a uh, half, three quarters of an inch down in there. I'll get this and I'll set the marker right where it is. We're going from zero to this mark right here. One, two, three, four ticks. So we're at 0 .002. So we are basically right within 
a standard spec for a new piston. Max is 0040, so we have two thousandths to work with. This piston is going to work perfectly in this cylinder. It's important to check your piston ring end gap, which is the gap between these two while it's inside the cylinder, because these rings, when they heat up, they're going to expand. When they expand, that gap is actually going to close in, and if they actually touch, it's going to cause pretty much a catastrophic failure because there's going to be nowhere else for it to go and it's going to expand into the cylinder walls and you're going to wear out your system, cylinder, you're going to melt your piston and the top of it's probably going to crack off here because this ring is expanding too much and there's nowhere for it to go. It's going to seize. So to do that, all that you're going to really need is a set of feeler gauges, the owner's or the service manual and possibly a file. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The standard piston ring gap is between 0.016 and 022 so what we do is we take the your piston ring top facing up slide it in there and just because it's all cattywampus and wonky there you take your piston and you push it down oh, about three quarters of an inch just enough to kind of even it all out and make sure it's setting level in there. Then you take your feeler gauge and check it. So we got 016. That fits in there. That's 022. It's a little tight. This one's 021, which I think is a little wide, but I don't need to remove any material. Pull that out. Alright, this one's 020, so I'll put this one on the top just for the hell of it. So both piston rings measure between 021 and 020, 0.021 to 0 0.020 of an inch. So they're both well within spec on the high side once again, but definitely in spec. My limit is 0.037, so I have plenty of room to play with there for a fresh build. It is definitely within the specs for the manufacturer here. So I'm going to note that. On both of them, I'm actually going to note the top one is 020 and the bottom one is 021. And then the piston to wall clearance is exactly 0 0.0020. Yes, 0020. So I write that stuff down so then whenever I pull this back apart, I'm going to measure everything and see how much wear I accumulated within a certain amount of time. So, so then when I go back to a B piston, or a Pro X piston, measure it up, see what the difference is. You can kind of figure out what you're doing wrong, what oil you can use to maybe do that. Maybe I need to use uh, filter maintenance a little bit better. Maybe the conditions are, the gear, whatever. You can always just track the engine wear through all of these measurements that you do. All it's taken me about 45 minutes to go through and do all of these. It's always a good peace of mind to know that it's gonna work and having the notes for when you take it back apart and you're out of limits that time period and then obviously you try to expand through it now that i know everything measures within spec and it's ready to go i can start assembling this power valve and get it mounted onto the bottom end so let's go ahead and do that now Cylinders prepped, ready to go in, or ready to go on. First thing I do is I grab my C-clips right here because they tend to go flying across the shop. So you got to keep an eye on these. I put one of them in the piston. If I get one of them on now, then I don't got to mess with it over there. 
it's always a good idea to pretty much orient the piston and how it's going to go and then you can pretty much plan which way you want to push the connecting rod in which way you want to put the cylinder on and whatnot this one i'm going to be putting the c-clip on the left side so all that i'd really do is i get it in a groove the best that i can both ends the open end get that in the groove the best that you can hold it in there with your thumb so she don't go flying kind of get it all right oh it actually went in how about that sometimes you have to take the wrist pin and push it through the other side just to get it to clip in but you can see this one i got it first shot then what i do is i basically soak the piston rings here if you look they're etched with a t hopefully you can see it it's right there that means top plain and simple oil the living crap out of these i put two stroke oil on them you can say i used a bunch of oil you want to make sure that you get these lined up with these pins. See there's a pin right here and there's going to be a pin right there. You can see the gap in it. So we'll take the gap, put that over the pin, kind of make sure those are pretty damn close to where they need to be. Take our wrist pin bearing here, already soaking in oil you can see, slide that in. piston arrow points in the direction of the exhaust direction of flow slide the wrist pin in and ever so gently put the second circlip in I heard it snap I just want to make sure it's seated all the way around Now what we're going to want to do is put it as low as we possibly can so we can get this jug on there. Alright, I lubed the inside of this up with two stroke oil. The cylinder here, it's all nice and lubed up. Pistons lubed up. Make sure that your piston rings are where they need to be, where the pins are. this and it should slide right on bingo cylinder nuts or cylinder base nuts are on we need to torque them to 42 newton meters i always go by newton meters instead of inch pounds foot pounds whatever the conversion is who cares newton meters just seems to be like right across the board doesn't matter what size wrench you're using or torque wrench that you're using it's all the same you don't have to sit there and add and subtract i'm using this motion pro dog bone that i got uh it's 12 14 mil if you don't have one of these they work mint because you can actually get to the nut here on the inside of the power valve where the linkage is instead of just putting a wrench on there and saying oh yeah it's good you can actually get in there and do it just when you use one of these remember don't go off the front of it like this parallel because you're actually adding torque to it because of this distance you want to go at a 90 degree off of it you also want to torque these in a crisscross pattern i always start with the power valve because this is the toughest one to get to it's i just always go for that one first next thing we need to do is connect this power valve linkage it comes off of the governor here you want to put it on now don't just go torquing this down, actuating the whole arm and everything else. You can actually break something in there, you can bend things. It's not gonna work the way it, it's supposed to after you do that. There's actually a fork in the governor linkage here that you can stick, there's a little tool, it's a rod that you put in there, but I just either put a drill bit or put a pick in there and kind of hold it, Kentucky windage it so you can torque it down. Take this little rubber gasket. Some people put sealer around here, but honestly, to tell you the truth, if that little seal that's on the power valve shaft fails, you're gonna get power valve gunk in here. Same way with the bottom. 
if this seal on the power valve actuator off the governor fails, you're going to get oil coming out of there. So I don't want to seal this in because if oil gets in here, something is going wrong. Something needs to be addressed. I like this little gasket just the way that it is. It's going to keep water out of here. Any dirt contaminants should keep it out of here. I'm not trying to keep oil from coming out of the engine with this. All right. Now that I have the power valve linkage all hooked up, cover on it, last thing we have to do is check the timing. To check your timing, you're going to need a dial indicator and an old spark plug. If you look at this, all I do is just chop it off, take the insulator out of it, use these threads to thread into your head, and you should be able to find your piston. Now what you're trying to do is you're trying to find top dead center. You're going to install your head. All you need is two nuts, just something to kind of put a little bit of torque on it to make sure that it's flat. Don't need to put your head gaskets in right now. You don't want to squash those or flatten them yet. If you can read that, I'm going to take the flywheel, spin it until I get the highest reading. That's going to be like 20, right about there. Set that to zero. All right, now we have top dead centers at zero right there. The manual says ignition timing before top dead center 0 0.007. So in order to do that, we're going to go 001. So each one of these ticks is 001. So we're going to go seven before. So turn it back this way is one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. Now I knew that because I was spinning the flywheel the opposite direction of where the arrow is. Now, 250s kind of suck because it's down here. 125s, they're up here more. All we're going to do is make sure that the line on the flywheel... You can't, probably can't see it. line on the flywheel meet, ma matches the line on the stator plate. And then we're going to torque it down. So that's pretty much what a top end is on a YZ250 Project Frank and Ripper here if you like what you see hit that subscribe button thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one